Hi, everybody. Everybody, I'm back. Everybody, Jeannie Young is back, and I'm back with yet another amazing recipe. I am so excited yet another day because today at the Young's house, Jeannie Young is going to share with you all how to make amazing beef and broccoli. This recipe is so delicious. It's so much fun. It does not require a lot of ingredients, and you know, you make a Jeannie Young style, it's going to be so tasty. Here are the lovely ingredients you will need. You all never had my beef and broccoli before. You better make yourself. Okay everyone, here's the lovely ingredients you will need. You're going to need some beef. And the beef that I have today, this is stewed beef here. And I have it just a little bit frozen. And the reason why I have it that way is because when it's partially frozen just a little bit, it's going to help me to be able to slice it really easy. Because I want to slice this into thin pieces, thinner pieces than what it is. Okay, so you're gonna need broccoli, of course. And I have some broccoli that I'm thawing out. You're gonna need some rice wine vinegar, as well as soy sauce. Right here I have some black soy sauce. You're gonna need some rice to put underneath your amazing beef and broccoli. You're gonna need some cornstarch to thicken up your beef and broccoli, and you will need some spices to spice everything up. So now we have some sugar here. You're gonna need some red pepper flakes. Now the red pepper flakes is optional. You don't have to use it. We're not trying to burn anybody's socks off. I'm just gonna put just enough in there just to give you a little bit of heat. Garlic and onion powder is definitely a must. Black pepper. We have some parsley here that I'm just gonna put on top of my rice and of course salt. Make sure your hands are impeccably clean. Let's get started with this really quick and simple yet so tasty recipe. Hey everyone, so the first thing that I wanna do, I wanna go ahead and make my rice. Those of you that are familiar with me, you know that I absolutely love the boil in a bag rice. So I'm gonna cook two bags. And all you need to do is basically just boil some water, make sure your water is nice and salted, throw the bags in the boiling water, and 11 minutes, this rice is gonna be done. It's gonna be perfect. It's gonna be nice and fluffy every time. So now we're gonna make our way back over to the island, and I wanna show you how to slice up your meat. Okay, so normally, I'll buy a different cut of meat when I'm making beef and broccoli, but since this is what we have, this is what we're gonna use. It's gonna be amazing, okay? So since we have chunks here, I would prefer slices, so we're just gonna slice these bad boys, okay? Just like so, it doesn't have to be too thin, okay? Honestly, all right? Just like so, and I'm gonna show you how to velvet this meat. And velveting is um, somewhat of a marinating technique that's going to assure you that your meat is gonna turn out nice, velvety, tender, and juicy. Never, ever dry when you velvet your meat. And it's so easy, it's a really quick step. I'm gonna to continue to slice this meat just like so, all right? I hope you all are having an amazing day today, as well as a great weekend. Is anybody doing anything special for their weekend? I know, I know we're all in the house with our families right now with what's going on in the world, but there's still so many things you can do with your families. Grab a board game. You know, grab a board game. You know, everybody has cards at their house. You know, there's lots of fun things you can do. Turn on Netflix. Turn a nice movie on for you and the kids or whoever is at your house or make a nice meal and enjoy each other. All right, or clean your house, sanitize your house. Absolutely. All right, so I'm gonna continue to slice this meat just like so and I'll be right back and I'm gonna show you how to velvet your meat. 
Okay, everyone, so now that we have our beautiful beef nice and sliced, let's go ahead and velvet it. It's really simple. If you have a little bit of Shaoxing wine or white wine, you can use that as well when you're velveting. Okay, so now we're gonna put some sugar in. Is the sugar gonna make this meat sweet? No, not at all, I promise you. So don't worry about that for one second. Now, there's one other ingredient I almost forgot to tell you all about the onion. We're going to use some onion and we're going to use some garlic, okay? Well, two ingredients. All right, so we went in with some sugar. We're going to use some pepper. Just like so, you can use white pepper if you want. It's up to your discretion. We're going to put some soy sauce in. Soy sauce is going to serve as our salt, okay? Just like so, don't be afraid to season. You always wanna season, you want everything to be nice and flavorful. Now, let's talk about the cornstarch. Cornstarch is gonna give you a beautiful tender meat that's gonna be nice and velvety and soft. It will never turn out dry when you use cornstarch. But you wanna marinate it long enough, at least 15 to 20 minutes. Okay, it's gonna give you that amazing taste the amazing texture nice and what am i trying to say ah what am i trying to say nice and moist maybe that's not the word nice and juicy how about that we'll, we'll, we'll just go with that but seriously using the cornstarch is going to do the trick now sometimes you will see me use baking soda as well the baking soda when you mix the baking soda with the cornstarch, it's gonna give you that same effect with the meat. I'm not gonna use baking soda today, but if you go back and look at a lot of my stir fry videos, you'll see me use the two. All right, so now we're gonna mix in the sugar, the pepper, the soy sauce, and the cornstarch. I need a little bit more cornstarch, and then we're gonna let this set for around 15 to 20 minutes. Let it get nice and beautiful. All right, just like so. This is really, really simple. In a few minutes, I'll be right back. Hey everyone, so our rice is done. I put a little bit of parsley in it. Look how beautiful and fluffy it is. Now I'm gonna go in with some butter. I want this rice to be, oh, who, who, who is gorgeous, it's fluffy. Get that butter in there and stir it around with that parsley. This part is done and out the way. Okay, so next thing that I wanna do is you wanna, remember I spoke about the garlic. We have garlic that I've chopped up. I have a pan here that has vegetable oil in the pan. I wanna get some beautiful color onto the garlic. If you have a little bit of ginger at your house, then you can use just a little tiny bit of ginger along with this garlic. Now we're gonna saute this garlic until it gets nice, beautiful, and golden brown. And right before it gets too dark, we're gonna add in our beef. And we're gonna stir fry the beef with the garlic and get some flavor worked in there. We wanna cook this beef until it's golden brown and it has a crispiness to the outside. Now what I wanna do right now is let's go ahead and get this onion cut up. This onion is gonna be amazing flavor in your beef and broccoli. And honestly, when you make beef and broccoli, feel free to put in any other vegetables that you would love to have in yours. You know, I was thinking today, I do have some tomatoes in the refrigerator. I was thinking possibly I might put some in there. We'll just see how I feel as, it, as I go on with the recipe. So I'm going to make, excuse me, I'm going to make this onion into some slices, just like so. And you can see I'm not using too much onion, just enough that's going to give you some flavor. All right, just like so. I am so glad that my eyes are not burning. <laughs> All right, once this garlic starts to get nice and sauteed up, I'll be right back. Okay, everyone, now that we're starting to get some beautiful color on our garlic, just like so, you see that color? That's what we're looking for. All right, now you don't want to put your meat in and your garlic hasn't started to turn golden brown. Because what will happen is in your dish, your garlic will taste raw. 
Give it some time to get golden brown before you put that beef in. Okay, so that's what we achieved right here in that raw flavor is, you know, taken away, if that makes any sense. Now we're gonna add our beef, okay? Make sure you have a big enough pan. You don't wanna overcrowd your pan with too much meat, okay? And I'm gonna kinda separate it a little bit so that it's all not on top of each other. I'm gonna turn this pan up onto a high heat. We're gonna let it get nice, beautiful, and golden brown as soon as that beef hit the pan. Oh, it smells so good right now. Okay, so now I'm getting excited. Let's go ahead and make our salsa. There's one ingredient I forgot to tell you about. We're gonna use some oyster sauce, okay? If you don't have oyster sauce, you can use fish sauce. If you're allergic to um, seafood, you don't have to use either one of them, okay? So now let's use some red pepper flakes, just a little bit, just enough for a little bit of spice but you don't have to use it, it's optional, okay? So now that we have that, we're going to put two pinches of sugar in, just like so. We're gonna go in with our soy sauce. This is thin soy sauce right here. You can see just how thin it is. And then I will give you measurements in the description below of all of the ingredients that you will need, okay? This is soy sauce. I'm gonna use the rest of this one here because that bottle's almost done. Perfect. You can use brown sugar if you didn't wanna use white sugar. It's really up to your discretion, okay? And you don't have to use the sugar at all. Okay, and we're gonna go with some oyster sauce. Keep in mind that oyster sauce is supposed to look nice and thick as it is. Okay, get you some in there just like so in this manner. There we go, that'll do the trick. I wanna wipe off the top of this. Let's see, I should have wet it. I'm gonna wet this so I can clean that off because oyster sauce gets, it tends to get sticky and you don't want, you know, that stickiness on your bottle when you go to open it up next time. So just give it a nice wipe with a wet paper towel, just like so to clean that off. The worst thing is when you open up something, whether it's ketchup, you know, it can be mustard. I don't like to open up things and they have a little bit of crust on the outside. <laughs> Let me know in the comment section below if you're like that as well. Okay, so we've put our soy sauce in. We're gonna go in with rice wine vinegar, just like so, not too much. You only need a little bit. And now we're gonna use our black soy sauce. Black soy sauce, if you've never heard of it before, it's a thick soy sauce. It's really black in color, and it's really thick, okay? Take a peek in at this. It is an amazing ingredient in Asian cooking. All right, and a little bit goes a long way, trust me. Now what I will do is I'm gonna taste this to see if I'm happy with the flavor. And if I am, we'll move on. This will be the base of our gravy that we're going to thicken up. I'm gonna grab a spoon really quickly. I wanna taste just a little bit of it to see if I'm happy, and I'll be right back. Okay, everyone, let's take a peek in at this beautiful beef. I can start to see that our beef is starting to get caramelized. So let's start turning it over. Oh yeah. This is exactly what I'm looking for. Look at this piece right here. It's gorgeous. That's what you want your beef to look like. Okay? And now you can do your chicken. This way you can use the same marinade when you're velvety, your stir-fried meat. I always use the same, you know, when I'm cooking stir-fry, whether it's turkey, it could be chicken. All right, just like so in this manner. You can velvet pork the same way. All right, this smells amazing. I wanna get that beautiful golden brown color on all of this meat, and then I'll show you what we're gonna do next. Okay, everyone, take a look at the beef. The beef is medium. It's cooked to medium right now. Here's what I wanna do. I wanna take it out of the pan, even though it's cooked medium. 
We're going to take it out because we don't want to overcook it. Okay? We'll take it out right now. And what we're going to do is we are going to put our onions and our broccoli in the pan and get it starting to cook. Okay? And once my broccoli is half the way cooked, we're going to add the beef back in. Don't worry about the beef not being fully cooked right now. Because once we add it back into the dish, it will continue to cook, especially when it gets in that nice, hot, bubbly uh, sauce that we're going to make, okay? So don't worry about that. So we're going to take this beef out just like so. All right. It smells so good. I can't wait to taste the piece. I am just so excited. Now let's talk about the broccoli. There's a couple of different ways you can address the broccoli. You can boil it for just a few minutes if you like, or you can just do like I'm going to do today and just start stir frying it right away. Okay? Sometimes I will boil it if it's, let's just put it this way. Um, if it's a fresh head of broccoli, I'm definitely going to boil it for about five I don't know, let's just say three to four minutes, okay? And then we take it out and put it into an ice bath, which would be cold water filled with ice so we can shock it and stop the cooking process, okay? And then we'll throw it in the pan and get it to saute enough, okay? Okay, so what I wanna do right now is I wanna separate the onions just like so and get them right in with the broccoli. You could use broccolini if you'd like. You could use Chinese broccoli with this. Absolutely you could. All right. We're going to get that onion in there. It smells absolutely amazing. Oh, and keep in mind, you don't want to cook these onions or the broccoli until it turns into mush. Don't be that person. You want the broccoli to still have some bite. You want the onion just to get nice and translucent. You know, you don't want it to be mushy either. When you're cooking stir fry, you don't want your vegetables to get mushy. All right, making sure that we cook this up on a higher heat. Look at that right there. That's gorgeous color. That's what we're wanting to achieve with this broccoli today. Okay, and then this will go back in. I'm going to show you how to make an amazing gravy. And lunch will be served at the Young's house. Make you some. Okay, everyone, take a peek in at these lovely vegetables. They are perfect. Okay? Now some of the huge pieces, I did go in and slice them a little bit. Alright, let's go ahead and put that beef back in. I tasted the beef. It is amazing. <laughs> you better believe it was good. Oh! Okay, so now here's what we're going to do. We want to work really fast from here because we don't want our veggies to get mushy. All right, we got beef and broccoli. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Wee, better make you some, daggone it. All right. I could have actually put a little bit more broccoli in there. All right, so here's what I want to do. We're going to take this liquid here, and we want to add it with some water. You can add it with chicken broth. You can add it with beef broth if you like. It's really up to your discretion. I'm stirring it because I do have sugar, you know, in here. I want to make sure I get all that goodness down into the water. All right, go ahead and get this in there just like so. This is going to be your gravy. We're going to thicken it up, and we're going to have beautiful beef and broccoli, baby. You hear me? Oh, you never had it before? Gina Young is showing you how to make it. It's so simple and so easy. We just want this to come up to a really quick boil. It'll happen very quickly because my pan is nice and hot. Okay, so as soon as I start to see a little bit of bubble starting to happen, right here, I have two tablespoons of cornstarch that we're just going to mix a little bit of this cold liquid in. Okay, this is the same liquid we used. Normally you would use cold water, but this is cold liquid. It will do the same exact thing. And we want to stir this around until you can't feel any dried cornstarch. This is what you call a cornstarch slurry. It's going to thicken anything up. Alright, so as soon as I get a nice boil onto our beef and broccoli, I'll be right back.
everyone I see a little bit of boil can you see in the middle of the pan you can see everything starting to boil now we're gonna go ahead put our cornstarch slurry in and you stir and you just keep on stirring until this liquid gets nice and thick and forms an amazing gravy okay it'll happen very quickly I'm just getting the excess cornstarch out of the pan or out of the ramekin be right back everyone look at this beautiful beef and broccoli Gina Young style all right now I want you to see how gorgeous this gravy is oh and you seen it was so easy to make and you can see how this broccoli still has some nice bite to it it's not mush let me see let me show you look at that it's still intact never mushy it didn't lose its color you always know when you cook broccoli too long you'll lose the color. It'll turn into somewhat of an army green. You know, this is still nice and vibrant, still has some bite. The meat is juicy as ever, you hear me? And this is an amazing sauce that didn't require, you know, anything. All right, so this is done. Listen here, if you all enjoyed this here video, give me a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed, make sure you subscribe. Make sure you click on that notification bell so you can be notified every time Gina Young uploads one of these awesome recipes. Tell your family and friends and everybody you know, hey, tell the whole world about Gina Young and what I'm doing in this kitchen on a daily basis, absolutely. I'm gonna say an amazing prayer and you all are gonna get that first bite. Hey everyone, take a look at this gorgeous plate. So we have, of course, our white rice. And we just put a little bit of butter. We've salted the water, parsley flakes just to make it nice and beautiful. And then we have our beef and broccoli. Oh, listen here. Let's go ahead and say our prayer so we can get that first bite. Heavenly Father, Lord Jesus, we thank you for today and for every day. Lord, we thank you for your love, time, your mercy, and your understanding. Please forgive us for our sins. Come into our hearts. We make you our Lord and Savior. Send your angels down to surround us day and night. And your Holy Spirit to help us make good decisions. Give us peace over our mind in the name of Jesus. Devil, you have no authority over this household in the name of Jesus. Devil, you are bound away from this house in Jesus' name. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the roof over our head the food, the love, the peace, and the joy that you bring us every day. We thank you for that, Lord. Amen. Amen. Thank you. All right, now let's talk about this kitchen bouquet. I used some. What did I use it for? Well, it doesn't have much flavor. But what it's used for is to change the color in any gravy. Okay, so if you want a little bit darker color in your gravy, use some of this. It'll turn your gravy this beautiful gorgeous color because if you can remember it wasn't this dark I just put maybe like two drops in there and you just stir it up and it's an amazing color okay let's go in I can't I can't wait I can't wait oh all right I'm going in for some of this beautiful gorgeous rice hold on guys I seriously have to get a thumbnail and I'll be right back everyone going in for this gorgeous rice oh yeah <laughs> it's perfectly fluffy my goodness who listen here mm. I, listen 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 when I came to make beef and broccoli I didn't come in this kitchen to play any games today Gina when I get in this kitchen there's no games being played this right here is gonna knock your socks off you hear me trust me when I tell you this all right so now that we have our rice let's go in for some of this beef and broccoli with those perfect onions oh man and this gravy that is just screaming my name oh wee, you better believe it is oh gorgeous you hear me look at this oh i'm so excited i couldn't be more excited mm. lunch at the young's house make you so all right come on come on in guys i know it's hot i know i know it's hot but i can't wait any longer <laughs> mm, 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 mm. Mm, mm, mm. let me get a piece of that broccoli mm, mm, mm. 
I want everything on this fork here. Mm. Taste this, guys. Let me know what you think about this recipe. It's going to knock your ever-living socks off. Mmm. I'm going in. Mmm. This right here is so delicious. You hear me? This beats any takeout recipe. And I'm not just saying it, guys. I am not just saying it just because I made it. This beats any takeout restaurant. You hear me? Oh, look at that. It's gorgeous. Mmm. Mmm. -hmm. Mmm. The meat. Mm -mm -mm. Mm. It's like a symphony being played on my taste buds. The meat is like butter. You hear me? And look at this gorgeous piece of broccoli. Oh, it's so delicious. Mmm. 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 I have the perfect amount of heat. The gravy is the perfect gravy. Mm. Mm. Girl, you are something else in that kitchen. You hear me? Mm. Mm. <laughs> mm -mm -mm. And as always, God bless each and every one of you. Thank you all for watching. Good night. Mm. Mm -hmm. mm -mm -mm.